Welcome to Anterior Anatomy and the Science of a Natural Smile. This DVD will give you a preview of a remarkably powerful tool that both dentists and labs can use to enhance the quality of their cosmetic restorations. In fact, every person involved in restorative and cosmetic dentistry will benefit from this system. Everyone from the dentist, their office staff and assistants, to in-house lab technicians, CAD CAM operators, waxers, ceramists, and dental lab quality control personnel will benefit. It takes the care and skill of all these people communicating and working together to reproduce an anatomical, natural-looking smile. That's the magic of this course. Anterior anatomy and the science of a natural smile not only provides an easy way to learn anterior anatomy, it gives you the ability to communicate clearly and use your understanding to manipulate, directly or through the communication to others, the exact anatomical features that will deliver the perfect natural smile. Think about it. If any component is missing, like knowing the essential anatomy, or understanding how each anatomical feature influences the appearance of a natural smile, or to having the ability to just communicate clearly to others, then the whole process starts to break down. Remakes increase. There are inconsistencies, misunderstandings. Quality declines. After you've previewed this DVD, imagine what it might be like if everyone who worked on a case from the dental office through the lab shared this knowledge you'd have an amazingly productive team, high-quality products, and very happy patients. In part one, you'll learn the internal anatomy of anterior teeth. These are the elements that the dentist must handle to prepare teeth, take impressions, and care for the health of the patient. In part two, you'll study surface anatomy and learn a characteristic of anterior teeth that has never been identified before. It is the secret to getting all the anatomical features to fall into place together. In part three, you'll see how each anatomical feature is manipulated and used to create natural looking teeth and beautiful smiles. As a major US lab owner said after previewing the DVD, I love the complete transition from simple anatomical terms to the advanced designs in part three. This should be the standard of communication between the dentist and the laboratory. It defines and simplifies what has been perceived as a mystery, anterior teeth, a masterpiece. Once you've studied this course, you'll insist that everyone you work with studies it too. It is an essential educational step in developing well-rounded technicians and achieving consistent results. Following this introduction are a few short excerpts from the anterior anatomy and the science of a natural smile. If you would like to purchase this program, or are interested in more information, please call PTC at 1-800-448-8855 or visit us online today at ptcdental.com. Enamel is the hard mineralized tissue which covers the crown or the exposed part of the tooth. The enamel is composed of prisms, or rods, that align perpendicular to the surface of the dentin and radiate outward, just like the dental tubules. The line on the surface of the tooth, where the cementum meets the enamel, Let's look at the labial anatomy in detail. Each anterior tooth has three labial lobes the mesial lobe, central lobe, and distal lobe. Let's take a closer look. The mesial lobe on the central runs from the incisal edge all the way down to blend into and form the gingival bulge. The mesial lobe is the longest and the most prominent of the three lobes. Now look at the distal lobe. It's quite prominent, like the mesial. The concave area of the lingual surface is called the lingual fossa, or the lingual concavity. The lingual fossa is bordered by the mesial and distal marginal ridges, the cingulum, and the lingual side of the incisal edge, which is our last feature to discuss. Let's take a look at all the lingual concavities.
Moving these transitional line angles will either have the effect of broadening the tooth or narrowing it, making the interproximal embrasures appear more closed or open, respectively. Notice here how when we move one line angle, we change the shape. You can see in this example how the curve, by being slightly depressed to the distal, enhances the length and boldness of the mesial lobe. This curve is also what gives an incisor its lovely flowing shape. Again, because it runs just distal to the long... On the gingival horizontal axis, the tooth would be rotated like a door hinged at the ceiling. The gingival would remain in place, but the incisal could be tipped in like this. There's a special term for this position, which is known as... The two upper centrals are found centered on the midline, facing flat to the front of the mouth and vertical in profile. You will find that in most pleasing natural smiles, the centrals will be flat to the front. Their axes will be vertical or tilted. Slightly.